Well, hey, everybody, thank you for joining us for this episode of the Redeeming Truth podcast. My name is Kyle, and I'm one of the pastors at Redeemer Bible Church, and I'm here with uh, two other pastors, Pastor Dale Thakra and Pastor John Benzinger. And we are excited to be in our new studio space. Uh, but we wanted to take a moment to introduce you to our new studio space and just kind of have a conversation, a bit of a, uh, a reminisce about episodes that we've done in the past and, and really what the purpose of Redeeming Truth podcast is. Mm. And then talk a little bit about what our goal is for the future. So, mm. John, I think yeah. when this podcast first started out, we're looking about 103 episodes ago, maybe 104, somewhere in there. Um, there was a need that you recognized, right? You you got an hour a week with our church people and there, yeah. there was a there was a need. Can you talk about that? Yeah, we were doing four services every Saturday. I'm sorry, every Sunday. Mm -hmm. So it was back to back to back to back and realized that there was so much going on in the world at the time that I didn't have time to talk about mm -hmm. that needed to be talked about. And so that's what that's what started this podcast was to say, we've got to speak to our church more than just the 35 minutes a week that I get to preach. We need to speak to them because they they need shepherding mm -hmm. in the larger areas of what's going on in this world. And so that's that's why we did this. Yeah. And or, I mean, early on, just, just even the the encapsulated in the name of the podcast, Redeeming Truth, mm. right? We're having conversations. What what could this thing be called? What should our focus be? And uh, we're recognizing that truth was being uh, co-opted by unbelievers, false teachers, uh, worldly philosophies, and our church is being lied to about what the truth is, mm. right? So we, we begin with conversations about uh, 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 movements in false churches. Uh, we begin with conversations about, um, you know, misunderstandings of the Bible and how do we counteract that? And of, of course, part of counteracting that is having these mm -hmm. conversations throughout the week, getting more face time with our mm -hmm. church. But what was on your guys' heart when, when we got going in this and, and have you been, um, shall we say, satisfied with the way things have been going? Are you excited about the way things are going, or have been going and where we're going? I think you came up with the name Redeeming Truth. And oh, so what was, on, what was on your mind? <laughs> I think it was just what Kyle was saying. I, mm -hmm. I think there's so much. Uh, there's, number one, living in a digital age, mm -hmm. this, this kind of effort from our church, I think, is necessary. Mm -hmm. uh, not only to reach our own people, but other people, and we, I don't think we knew this going in, but people started looking in over our shoulders too. They started watching the stuff that we were producing, commenting on it, sharing it. And that's, that's been a surprise. So that's been very satisfying. Yeah. The but goal the, was, was for our church and then absolutely. whoever it might bless. And I think that's still the goal, right? Yeah. Our, I yeah. think the goal is for our church. Mm -hmm. um, but the, the, the redeeming truth was, was really born out of our desire as a staff to, Anything that we do has to be built from the truth, which means from the scripture, mm. um, from the words of Christ. And so we we feel like there's so many there's so many voices out there that are proclaiming it, that they're Christian voices mm. that they're just not. And we've we've had a couple of episodes where we've dealt with stuff like that. Wake up, Olive would be an example of mm. that, where people are, are talking about what is true when we know what the scripture says mm -hmm. is what is true. And it's counter to the things that are out there in the Christian uh, world right now mm -hmm. that happened with stand as well. There's, there's things that there are things that Christians that we love, who even go to our church that we love dearly are hearing and being uh, confronted with every day mm -hmm. that we wanted to speak into it. And so that's, that's why redeeming truth happened. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are um, charged with shepherding the flock right. entrusted to our care. Mm. And while we get a chance to do that on the weekend with preaching, they needed more care. They yeah. needed more shepherding because they're the assaults on the truth are many and they are constantly coming. Mm. And so we've we've had to uh, do these po kind of podcasts in order to help and care for them, to protect them from wolves. And what I don't I don't think that we were any of us were expecting was how many people would look over our shoulder while, right. we, while we tried to do that. But so God has opened up an effective door and a, and a, a wide door for effective ministry, like uh, Paul talks about in in first Corinthians 16. And so we, we 
excited to walk through that door. And uh, throughout the years, we've seen the Lord use some of our podcasts in some really powerful ways, ones that maybe we wouldn't even expect mm. him to use are things that we'll get emails about from mm -hmm. people. You know, I got an email this morning about the one we just dropped today, mm. 103 on salvation. And mm. so it's just one of those things where we are, um, for whatever reason, the Lord has said, we're going to take what's happening at this little, almost di almost dead church in uh, Gilbert, Arizona. And we're not just going to rescue the church. We're actually going to blow this thing up. Mm. We're going to, we're going to use this place to do some effective ministry for the body of Christ, out, even outside of not just the city of Gilbert or the county of Maricopa, but but around the world. Mm. And so this is this was not part of any master plan. This was just yeah. something that we we kind of fell into the Lord saying, okay, we're gonna bless this. Mm. And we'll take and, and so take it. And we there. had talked about podcasting for years, even yeah. before this launched, right? Absolutely. Um, so when this finally launched, I think I remember having conversations with you, John, about hey, if if a hundred people, you know, from our church listen to what because we didn't know we were going to shoot videos yeah. right early either so that's right our we're, first we're one our audio. very first one right. was audio only, was audio only. Yeah. so yeah. we were we were thinking small mm -hmm. we were thinking like our church mm -hmm. if, if just a portion of our church were to mm -hmm. listen to yeah. how we can expand on john sermons or talk about the culture you know cultural things going on that was that was really the goal mm -hmm. so anything else on top of that has been Obviously, like John just said, it's just a huge opportunity that the Lord has given us mm -hmm. to just, and we've stepped through it. Yeah, it seems, you know, we, we've been looking at shepherding in multiple uh, kind of avenues. If you think about mixed media, you know, how can, we, how can we reach people in different ways? And we've got Sunday morning, we have fellowship in the body of Christ, we have growth groups, we have discipleship groups, we have classes. We have, this is another mode for discipleship. This is another mode for engaging conversations and the truth. And then John, like you said, I mean, we didn't really expect this, but as, especially as COVID hit and churches right. took a nosedive, not, not because churches are irrelevant, but because they made themselves irrelevant by shutting down and not saying anything. So we took advantage and took the opportunity to start producing content, put truth out in the, uh, the, the, you know, the, the world of the internet, um, and then we started realizing, wait a minute, I think you're the first person I heard say this in our circle, John, was uh, this is an audience that has a population combined that's larger than China and Russia put together. Exactly. This is a huge online mission field. Mm -hmm. So not only is Redeeming Truth a great opportunity for us to continue to shepherd the flock among us, but to cast truth out into a, a, a generally unreached group by anyone other than false teachers. Right? That's right. Yeah. The false teachers dominate the online space. Mm -hmm. They own it. They are the most popular. They are the most prolific people in the online space. And there are billions of people listening to them there. Absolutely. Yeah. And so it was like, we, we were talking about this and just going, why would we, be, because the Lord has opened this door, why would, we, why would we allow the false teachers right. to have this space? Mm. Let's, let's yeah. go into that space, preach the the truth, COVID hits, and then there's hundreds of pastors that preach expositional sermons, flooding that space mm. with truth. It was, it was a wonderful, right. wonderful time. Yeah. And it, it, it's something where when, when we look back on that, we say, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity. Mm. But also that this is a place where people, I mean, I, I talked to a lady just the other day who got saved watching our podcast in Australia. Mm -hmm. And then, crazy. And then now do people get saved by watching podcasts or is it because you were speaking and preaching the word of God? Was say, <laughs> not either or. It's, it's it's, bold yeah. Right? So, so she, so she's watching, she gets saved. Then she, she, um, reconnects with her husband. He gets saved. Mm -hmm. They were, they were estranged. Her kids are now saved. Mm -hmm. And now they're just like, we, we want to come to America and meet you. And we want to go to, we want to do an entire thing in America where we go to all these ministries mm -hmm. that impacted us wow. during 2020. That's That's and she said like, and yours is the one we want to go to the most. Wow. And so here we are, this little church in the middle of nowhere. And God used us to reach her and, and, and many others all over the world. And so it, it is something where 
this is this is something now where we look at it. This is a stewardship that the Lord has allowed us to have. It's mm. it's not just now for the people of our church, although they're still primary. They they are the people that we are creating these podcasts for. But we now understand that there are thousands of people, like like Dale said, looking over our shoulder yeah. while we're our shoulders while we're trying to care for our church, but also recognizing that there are things that people need to know. Now we don't we don't do podcasts on everything. Right. And that's the thing. There there are many things where we're going, we don't need to get into the middle of that, not because we don't have opinions, not because yeah. we're afraid to, but because we don't need to proliferate the fighting amongst brothers mm. that is constant right now, especially within reform Christianity. There's about a dozen things right now that we're that that everybody is being forced to take sides on. And if you're if you're on this side, then you can't be friends with these people. If you're on this side, you it, it is it is so destructive right now. Yeah. And so there there are many things that people ask us, hey. Can you do a podcast on such and such? We're like, no, yeah, we're just not going to do a podcast. There's on 12 that. other guys doing a podcast and on they that. can watch that. Somebody's on a circuit, you know, promoting Go their ahead. book, whatever. Great. And then we're called chicken. No, no whatever. problem with that. But yeah, right. we're, we're primarily focused on our own church and shepherding our own church, yep. which brings me to the next question, yeah. which is in looking back at some of our episodes, do you guys have any favorites that stand out? And I will start. And I think it comes back to what you just said is episode 85. Mm. Now we called it how to fight on Twitter, which, you know, that's just kind of a provocative title, but really it's a focus on Romans 12 and how we can, as Christians, show unity with Christians, not with false Christians, with Christians and outdo one another in showing honor and brotherly love. And I thought that was a very necessary conversation. It was impactful for my own heart. Mm. And I love that we put that one out there. Well, you can tell we didn't prep that question <laughs> because I'm sitting there going through the Rolodex in my mind right now of the things that we've talked about. Um, I've I've loved some of the guests that we've had. Yeah. I mean, I think yeah. about having Owen Strand on here. Um, I think about just some of the um, Bill Roach was a good episode. I, I've loved yeah. I've loved uh, our own David Farnell mm-hmm. talking about. Yeah. You know, it's just there's been such a wide swath yeah. of, of episodes for me that it would be hard for me to to kind of nail one down and some might think like well the ones that got five hundred thousand views that that's fine Mm -hmm. but for me it's the content that matters the most not the viewership so um yeah it's the ones we have the conversations with our people who came and they said that really hit me where the 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 lord was working on my heart for sure yeah i i think for me there there there's some recent ones that i've really enjoyed but there's a, a section in the early 70s of our episodes when we talked about social justice mm-hmm. where we where we had Owen Strand and Elisa Childers mm-hmm. we had the guys from just thinking Daryl and Virgil who we loved dearly mm-hmm. we had uh, a bunch of we, we had a couple of uh, we had about six different interviews all all jammed into one I think in, in the first one and so and we had Bill Roach and right. so so those were those I think were significant because that was in the middle of 2020 and the, the heights of uh, of the riot and the election and it was a a very needed line in the sand that had to be drawn here at redeemer in this community as other churches sadly were going woke embracing marxist ideology baptizing it with christianity and so we had to take a line in the sand and what that did is protect not only our flock, but it told people all over the world that is a place over there where I'm going to be safe. Yeah, I'm going to be safe from the from the false doctrine. I'm going to be safe from the ideology mm-hmm. in a place where they're going to hold on to and preach the truth. And that's what elders are supposed to do. We're told to hold fast to the faithful word, Titus mm-hmm. one one nine, be able to re- exhort in sound doctrine, refute those who contradict. And that's really what our job is supposed to be. This is how we care for our flock but we, we it starts by holding fast to the word so i love that one i love our our interview with with dr farnell and bill mm-hmm. roach on yeah. inerrancy yeah because that's where we're taking another line in the sand and yeah. saying we don't we don't care where evangelicalism is going that it's it's becoming a lost movement yeah we're going to stand with the historic evangelicals who said inerrancy was the was the watershed issue 
Mm. This is what separates us. This in the Trinity separates us from everybody else. Yeah. So we're going to hold firm to historic doctrine of the Trinity as, uh, as summarized in the, in the uh, Chicago statement. Mm. And we're going to stand against social justice because it's another religion. We, we had a, we, we just had a recent one uh, against Roman Catholicism. Mm. Same thing. Yeah. Episode this 100. Is, this is not a, uh, another denomination. This is a false religion. This is our yeah. mission field, you know? And so bringing that kind of clarity, yeah, it causes people to leave our church. I get it. It causes people to put all kinds of nasty comments. It's fine. We don't really care. We don't even read the comments anyway, mm. you know, but it's one of those things where we had to be, we had to do this yeah. because we are in a time when the truth is being attacked. If we're going to redeem it, if we're going to buy yeah. it back from the attack, yeah. we're going to do that. Why? For the sake of the flock that's been entrusted. Yeah. So if somebody care. comes to us and says, the world is changing, nothing's going to stop it. You better get on board. We say we're already on board with Jesus. Mm. Yeah. And, and we're going to do yeah. our best to put a, uh, to put all kinds of problems on, on, we're going to put a bomb underneath that train. Yeah. Proverbially. Up. Yeah. Proverbially. 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 We're going to blow truth that bomb. thing up. We're going to come <laughs> after that and we're going to yeah. blow it up because well, it, you are attacking the truth. hundred percent. And that's really, again, I mean, kind of bringing it full circle. The reason why that name for the podcast right. came into your head, redeeming truth, taking truth that has been co-opted by people who are redefining terms and redefining scripture in its application for the church and putting it back in uh, in a God-ordained framework. Yeah. So our people and then anyone who watches can understand what, what they're supposed to do. Somebody told me once that redeeming truth was not grammatically correct. And I was like, well, that makes sense that I came up with it then. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. But it, re it reminds me of a podcast you and I did called The uh, Need for Courage. Yeah. Mm -hmm. that, that this is a time to act. This is the time for right. church 45. leaders, yep. <laughs> for church leaders, for pastors mm. to take a stand yeah. on the side of truth. And unfortunately, uh, there's too, too many uh, Christians today just don't know the truth. Yeah. They, they go by their feelings. They, they go by the fads. They don't, they don't, they don't follow the truth. They're not taking every thought captive, uh, exactly. stealing their mind with scripture, yeah. guarding scripture, treasuring it in their heart to, to keep themselves from sinning. And so they make themselves open to attack. And we want to do everything we can here on this podcast to keep that from happening. And in the future, if you've enjoyed what you've seen, uh, hopefully you'll enjoy it more in this really great studio space uh, that uh, our team put together for us. Uh, we're going to put it to use. Uh, we're going to use this space to uh, redeem time, to redeem scripture from being misused, to redeem cultural topics and put them in the light of scripture. We're going to have as many expert guests as we can uh, who are like minded with us, who we can look to and say, the Lord has given you special insights on this. And we want to share that with our people. And so we look forward to hopefully many more years of ministry together, whatever the Lord does, he's going to do, but we will stay with our noses to the grindstone and faithful in this way. So yeah. if, if you've been part of our audience for the last couple of years, or if you're newer to our audience, thank you so much for watching. We'd love to see your comments uh, down underneath this video. If you've liked what you've seen so far and you want to see more, go ahead and hit like, hit subscribe. And we're so grateful that you've joined us for this episode. We'll see you on the next one.